In this video, I want to talk about the idea of a construct in psychology. Uh, this is one of those things where you, when you see the definitions, sometimes they can be extremely complicated sounding and confusing. And really the concept is pretty simple and I'm going to try to approach it in a very simple way. Uh, so first of all, let's, let's talk about something that's not a construct. Let's get a little, a little context here. So the big picture is this has to do with variables. Uh, and it has to do with measuring and defining variables and understanding variables. Let's talk about a variable that is not a construct. So height would be an example of a pretty simple variable. It doesn't get much simpler than something like height. And I say it's simple because height is something that is, we might say, directly observable. We can directly look and see, literally see how tall something is. So if we have a person in our experiment, in our study, whatever it might be, and we're wanting to know something about their height, uh, maybe we're studying something to do with uh, growth hormone, and we want to know how, you know, how tall the person, different people in our study are. Uh, so we can uh, take a temp tape measure and, and put it up next to the person. We can we can literally see how tall they are. So this is a directly observable variable. But in many areas of, of science, we have variables that are not simple at all. And by not simple, I mean we can't directly look and see them, or we can't see certain aspects or elements or parts of them. So a good example of this would be something like gravity. We know that there is something that makes objects fall to the ground. And you think, oh, that's gravity. We can directly see gravity, but we can't directly see it. We see the effects that it's having. We see that when something goes up, then it falls back down. We see that the, the uh, planets orbit the sun in a certain way. Uh, we say these things are caused by gravity, but gravity itself is not, not directly observable. So gravity is what we would consider a construct. And the definition that I'll give you for construct, I'm going to try to keep it very simple, is it's a variable. It's a variable that cannot be directly observed. And I would say that if you want to really get technically correct about this, uh, we could talk about that you might be able to observe some parts of the variable or some aspects of it. You can certainly uh, observe the effects that the variable has. Otherwise, we wouldn't know it was there. But we can't directly observe it. So we know there's something out there that causes, when you throw something up in the air, it causes that thing to fall back down to the ground. We know there's something out there that causes uh, satellites to orbit the Earth and the planets to orbit the sun. We know there's something out there that's causing these things. We know many of its characteristics. We know the effects that it has, but we don't actually know what it is exactly. And we don't know all of its characteristics or all of its properties. And so far, we haven't figured out a way to directly observe all of those characteristics. Although physicists are always working on, on, uh, on coming up with new ways to do that. So the idea is we have, uh, we have this knowledge of the, the effects that something is having or some of the characteristics that it has, uh, but we don't know exactly what it is. Uh, but we decide, well, there's got to be something out there. There's got to be something out there that's causing this. There's some variable that we can't directly get to, but we're going to go ahead and label it. In this case, we're going to call it gravity. We're going to try to describe it as best we can, and we're going to try to, over time, improve our understanding of it. So, for example, with gravity, uh, you know, a while ago, Newton comes along, Isaac Newton, and says, 
I think I understand uh, more of the characteristics of this gravity. And he tries to expand this construct. He tries to add it to our construct um, that we're calling gravity. And he comes up with something called the, uh, the law of universal gravitation. And he figures out some of the ways that gravity works in the universe. Um, but it actually turns out that he wasn't exactly correct. And Einstein comes along later and revises the construct. And he says, oh, it doesn't have to do with uh, the things that Newton thought it has to do with. It has to do with curvature of space-time. And he has this very sophisticated revision of the construct. And that is uh, one of the things that you will see with constructs. Constructs in psychology are very much the same in that we know some of its characteristics, but we don't. We can't observe all of it. We we don't uh, understand exactly how it works. But we're continually trying to uh, improve that understanding over time and revise it. So you will read in scientific journal articles. Sometimes quite a lot of time is being spent uh, debating, arguing, uh, or making suggestions over what should be the correct way that we're thinking about a construct and how can we best. Uh, add on to our understanding of it. We also take constructs and we say, okay, we know these things about them. We think the different parts of the construct are related in this particular way. That helps us explain stuff that we maybe couldn't explain before or predict things that we couldn't predict. So we might uh, uh, take some aspect of Einstein's theory of gravitation and then use it to predict something out in the universe and then look to see if that thing actually happens. Uh, so constructs, even though they're, they're hypothetical, they, we don't know if this is exactly how all these different things are related and we don't know if this is exact, exactly how things are working, we can use the construct to help us explain things and predict things. And then depending on whether those explanations and predictions seem to hold true over time, we can revise the construct to make it better. So a construct is a, is a variable, but it's a variable where we're saying we, don't, we can't get at all aspects of it, at least not at the moment. So we're going to have to try to, uh, try to do our best to put together a good uh, picture of this construct and revise it over time. Um, but another thing you will uh, often uh, see is you'll, you'll see constructs defined as, uh, oops, that's the wrong color, as explanatory, meaning like I was just saying, they're used to explain things. So we would say a construct is an explanatory variable that can't be directly observed. So why is a person acting the way they're acting? Well, because of their anxiety. Is anxiety something that we can directly observe? Well, not exactly, but there is this cluster of things that we can observe that all seem to be tied together in a certain way, and we call those anxiety. We call that cluster uh, of characteristics that all seem to be related in some way anxiety, and that then allows us, our understanding of that construct allows us to then predict other things that we or explain other things. Why is that person acting the way they are? Well, because of an increased state of anxiety. So constructs are explanatory variables that cannot be directly measured.